Yo, 2001 Honda Accord. This is an F23 A1. All the 1994 to 2002 Accords from the F22s, the 2.2s, and the 2.3 liters, they're pretty much all the same. It's the same kit. I'm using an Asian timing belt and water pump kit. There's like an Acura CL, and I think there's an Odyssey van that uses the same kit too that's got four-cylinder F engines in them. I'm using an Asian kit because that's the best one. It's the only one that I trust outside of the dealer. As you can see, that's an actual genuine Japanese pump. And that's the biggest reason why I use ASIN. It comes with two belts. These F engines have a balance shaft in them because the crankshaft has uh, got a really big stroke on it. So they put a balance shaft in it to keep the engine from shaking. Comes with a couple of pulleys and some springs. First thing I'm going to do is drain the coolant out of this thing. There should be a big plastic cover under here that's got some clips that hold it in, but it probably got ripped off in a snowstorm, just like the rest of these. On the radiator, there's a drain. I want to just open that up and put a drain pan under here and get that coolant out and let that drip. Looking under the car, it looks like it's got some oil leaks here and there. There's some oil coming out of the front of this engine and some other gooky stuff. Some of it's way up high. Might be a valve cover. I already took the tire off, 19 millimeters on that. I got this plastic cover I need to take off to get at the harmonic balancer. Got some plastic here that's all busted up. There's a plastic clip here and there. You gotta pull the centers out of it. And then these clips come out. Looks like somebody cheated and put an eight millimeter self-drilling screw up here. I have a crankshaft holding tool here. Um, sometimes you can rent these from parts stores. That goes on here like so. Then I have a 19 millimeter on a breaker bar and I'm using a jack pole because these things are usually pretty tight. I just want to loosen that up for now and I'll take it out later. I have a valve cover I'm going to need to take off. Get this PCV valve out of here. Got a breather hose with a pinch clamp on it. Kind of be careful with that. These like to break sometimes. They get a little brittle. Spark plug wires got to come off. It's kind of hard to get these in the wrong location. Flop those out of the way. I believe there's five 10 millimeter bolts on this. Pry it up, take it off. Yeah, I can tell that, that valve cover gasket is probably an old leaker. I'm just going to put a paper towel over this just to keep any junk from falling in it. I can put my hand under this distributor and it's all full of oil. There's an O-ring inside of here that's probably going to be hard as a rock and leaking. I'm going to take that off and replace it. I'm not going to show any video on it though. Leaky rock hard seal, check. Squishy heater hose that's ready to pop, check. I'll be replacing that too. I'm gonna remove this power steering pump. There's a couple of 12 millimeters on here. I just got a deep 12 millimeter and a little three ace wobble. Oh, what the heck's going on there? Somebody tricked me and put a 13 millimeter here. That ain't supposed to be there. I gotta flop this out of the way. Got some wires here I'm gonna flop out of the way. Alternator belt. I got a 14 millimeter on this alternator. Just loosen that up about a turn. Then kind of down on the bottom I got a 12 millimeter nut for the adjuster. Loosen that up about a turn or two. There's an adjuster bolt for this. It's a 10 millimeter. I just got a swivel sock and a really long extension. I'm going to loosen this up counterclockwise and this alternator will loosen up and go down. I just want to loosen it up enough to get the belt off. This dipstick and tube's got to come out. There's a 10 millimeter for that. That just pulls out. There's an O-ring down there that didn't come out with the tube. I'm going to want to take that out and make sure it's still good. Most of the time they're reusable. This one's still a little squishy and it's not cracked, so it's probably gonna be good. Now I gotta get this top mount off. There's a 10 millimeter. 
And that's a ground. That's really important ground too. Got to make sure you put that back on. There's a 12 millimeter here. And this is like some kind of keeper. So the nut comes out and then this falls out the bottom. Then I have three 17 millimeters. This actually has a metal pan. Most of them are aluminum. So I put this block of wood on the corner and I'm just gonna jack it up a little bit. I don't wanna bend the pan, so I don't wanna get too carried away. So I'm just gonna grab this mount and I'm just gonna jack it up ever so slowly. And when it lines up right, it'll pop right out. I can let it back down too and leave it down until I gotta put that mount back in again. I have a couple 10 millimeters on this top cover. I think that's all of them. Give it a wiggle, pop it out. I can take this harmonic balancer bolt off the rest of the way now. Give this a wiggle back and forth. It should fall right out. Now on this lower cover, there's wiring for a crankshaft sensor. And on the back side, there's a clip. And I need to get up here with a needle nose pliers and pinch these things in and pull it through. Now I can pull this wire the rest of the way out of, out of the way. I have a little rubber seal thing here over this adjuster bolt. I wanna get that off of there. I think I have like five bolts for this lower cover. I put the harmonic balancer back on and I got the bolt kind of a little bit tight. This engine runs counterclockwise, so it goes this way instead of clockwise like most. So whenever you turn it to line up your timing marks, you should always turn it backwards. Well, counterclockwise anyways. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to line up my camshaft sprocket. And to make sure this thing's lined up, I got to look at the back. And on the pulley, you see an arrow that's pointed up and then a notch on the on the camshaft cap. Those are supposed to be lined up and there's grooves down here that got to be lined up with this plastic cover on both sides, if you can see that one. The pulley on the front too says up, so you know it's up. There's a mark on the bottom cover for the harmonic balancer, but I won't be using that. If you can see those little notches, the red one is for the timing which doesn't need to be adjusted on this car. And the white one is the zero. And if your cover's actually on, it lines up with, with this notch right here on the lower cover. And now that it is zero too, I just want to get a good look at these alignment marks for the balance shaft. There's a bolt you can put in the shaft to keep it from turning, but I never use it. So you got this greasy groove lines up with that notch. And then your other shaft right here you can see there's a there's a mark right here and that lines up with that arrow right there so all of that's lined up there's other there's other marks too when i get this balancer off i can find a mark on the timing belt pulley on the crankshaft too these belts feel really nice too i can turn this almost a quarter turn that's how i know it's adjusted right that's just how i do things this balance shaft adjuster it's got a spring on it i can take that off I actually have a new one, 14 millimeter on this tensioner bolt. I just want to loosen that up and get this belt off of here. And then I can get this pulley off. A lot of times a key comes with it. And I'm just going to jam that key right back in there. I got a 10 millimeter on this bracket. What the heck is splurging out of that? I can loosen this nut up now. And this washer, get this bearing off of here. Looks like somebody actually put a bolt in here. Every time I see these, that thing's usually missing. Looks like it's an eight millimeter. I don't think that's supposed to be in there. It says 9.8 and there's a little anchor on it. Uh, I've never seen that Honda bolt look like that. I can pull down on this with a hook tool just to loosen up the tension and take this belt off of here. Get this spring and this tensioner off. The weep hole in that water pump is definitely leaking. It's been leaking for a long time. I don't know what brand of water pump that is. I can't really tell. Some Chinese leaker. I see oil all over the place. I think it's from I don't know where. 
I just want to take this pulley off and I want to inspect that seal and it actually looks clean. Okay, I'm not replacing it. Yeah, I'm coming to the conclusion that all of that oil that's leaking on the timing belt side is coming from that valve cover gasket. The camshaft seal looks really clean too, so I'm going to leave all the seals alone. I have like five 10 millimeter bolts on this water pump. I'm going to leave that one a little bit loose because if there's still water in this engine, it's going to come flying all out of there and make a big huge mess. Get a little magnet to pull that one out of the hole. I got one more to go. I'm just going to loosen this one up a little bit too. Then I'll get a little pry bar action and try to break the seal and let it leak out. Squirrel this thing out of here. That looks like it's been leaking for a while. There's the bottom weep hole. It's completely plugged up with junk. I cleaned the block up pretty well enough. This seal is as hard as a rock. And on the block side, there's a little bit of corrosion. I scraped everything off with a razor blade and I, I couldn't get all the corrosion out of it. It's pitted pretty good. So... I don't know. Once in a while on the comments sections, I get people telling me I'm an idiot because I use gasket sealant on a, on a, on a Honda seal like this, and I'm not supposed to, and blah, blah, blah. And I don't really care. This seals it up, so that's what I'm going to do. If it was a Subaru, it might not even have a gasket. It might just be gasket sealant. So I got a little bit of ultra gray Permatex here. I don't want to use too much. You don't want it making a big mess. You don't want it running through your engine. I just want to use just enough to, to fill in the, the cracks and the voids in between this, this seal. And when it squishes down, it should seal it just good enough, I hope. You get an old corroded car like this and sometimes these seals don't work as good as they're supposed to because there's no f really clean machine surface anymore. And that's all I use. It's really not that much at all. And I got about 12 minutes to put this on before it starts tacking up. I clean this surface really good. And then I hit it with some brake cleaner. Try to put this on without touching anything. For whatever reason, this isn't lining up the way it's supposed to. So I got a little alignment punch here. This one's kind of fun. It's got to go in that hole. I'm just going to go in kind of a crisscross pattern and snug these down a little bit. Now that I got all these snug down, I can torque them down to my 105 inch pounds or 8.7 foot pounds, they say. So nine foot pounds, pretty much. All right, all those are torqued. Now I'm going to put the timing belt tensioner on. There's a hole right here and a pin right there. You just got to make sure the hole goes in the pin. I got a couple of just old bolts laying around in this adjuster nut. Just going to kind of screw that on there nice and loose. Just so it doesn't fly off or anything, do anything dumb on me. Then I'm just going to double check my timing marks for fun. I got a dot right here, and that's got to line up with these two arrows, keyways facing straight up. I don't have to deal with the balance shaft yet, but that notch lines up with that notch. And then there's another one up here on top. That notch lines up with that pointer on the top. And these line up here. And then I got this shaft here. If I go up top, that groove lines up with that groove right there. Then I got to make sure my camshaft sprocket didn't move. That looks good. And those notches look good. So I'm going to put the timing belt on now. I put the belt around the camshaft sprocket first. And this right here is the drive side. And this over here 
with the water pump and the tensioner, that's the driven side. So the drive side goes straight from the camshaft sprocket to the crankshaft. And I want to line them up first and make sure that, that this belt is tight. So this side's kind of taut. And this side's loose. That's how I know that's going to be right. Now I can try to put my spring on for the tensioner. I just got a little hook tool here. Try to get that on there. All my timing marks look really nice. Now I can throw this bolt in here that's not supposed to be here. I'm basically just putting that on there for now just so this pulley doesn't move. And I can put that sprocket on. Same here, 105 inch pounds on this. And that should move. These things turn really easy, so I got to make sure they don't. Pull this back just a little bit. Put this washer back on. I'm going to take this bolt out and leave it out now. It doesn't belong here. Now that I double and triple check my marks, and this all feels kind of good enough. I'm going to put this harmonic balancer on. I don't need to get it super tight, just enough so that nut doesn't walk off. The tension on the belts feel pretty good enough. I'm just going to tighten this down by hand, this tensioner nut, and just snug it down real good. I just want to snug it down so, it, so the pulleys don't move. Since this engine runs counterclockwise, I'm going to turn this thing counterclockwise two revolutions. I just lined up the camshaft marks. Now hopefully I can get this off without it moving. And that belt I can turn a quarter turn. So that's too loose. And that one's a little too loose too. So I just have to loosen this up and I should see these tensioners move. This tensioner moved a little bit. I got a 14 millimeter that I had to cut down for these cars a long time ago so I can get in here and use an actual torque wrench on this nut. This gets torqued to 33 foot pounds. I can turn this. Yeah, it could be a little bit tighter. That one feels right. I'm going to get a little more out of that one. A million people will tell you not to do, do this, but I'm going to put just a little bit of pry bar action on it. Just a little bit. Oh, that feels perfect. Oh, yeah, that's really nice, too. This belt right here, it doesn't need to be that tight at all. In fact, most of the time it feels like it's going to slip right off. That's the way they are. Time for the greasy cover. Same here, 105 inch pounds if you care about such a thing. Put my wire back on. And this, 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 this rubbery thing. I think that keeps the cover from coming out if it feels like getting hot and warping. A lot of times I do these jobs and the, the harmonic balancer's touching the, the cover and it wears a big hole in it. So that's probably there for a reason. The bolt requires oil for a proper torque reading. Any oil will do. You just need like one drop in between the washer and the bolt. Couple good drops on here. Now I need to torque this down to 181 foot-pounds, and this is mucho important. It's very crucial that you torque this down, because if it's too loose, this balancer can come right off, and I've seen it happen. This cover can be next. Suppose I can do this alternator air conditioning belt next. Kind of like the timing belt, only a little bit looser. Timing belts don't twist like a serpentine belt does. There, I can turn that about a quarter turn. 
so that's that should be perfect this big guy I want to do to 33 foot pounds in the little 12 millimeter adjuster nut on the bottom I want to do that to 16 foot pounds now I can do this power steering pump I got rid of that wrong bolt that was in it before and found some happy Honda stuff laying around there's a half inch square right here for like a half inch drive. I find that not to work very good. So I just get in between here with a pry bar and try to pry up on the thing. Same thing here. That feels about right. Get that a little snug. Check this belt again. Yeah, that feels about right. I can turn it a quarter turn. Same deal here, final torque these to 16 foot-pounds. I cleaned up the valve cover, put a new gasket on that. I already cleaned the ceiling surface too, but on these corners, I want to put a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag, and I just want to touch off on these corners. Then I have some ultra-gray gasket sealant, and I just want to put a little bit on these corners, all four corners. If you see that this gasket sealant doesn't stick, then you know you didn't get it clean enough. I have a new gasket. You don't need any gasket sealant on the valve cover. And I put new seals in here too. And uh, You need to lubricate those. I'm just going to put this straight down on here. Try to line it up with them tubes. You got to kind of watch it too. Sometimes if you force it down, these seals will tear. So you just want to make sure they fall down real nice. And I put new seals on these bolts. I used a vise and a socket to get these on. And I had to take the old ones and cut them out with a side cutter. So you cut the rubber in half and then they come off. You want to start in the center and work your way out. I'm just snugging these down for right now though. Now that I got them all started, I'm just going to go a little at a time until I feel these bolts zero. There's little stops on the bottom of the bolts. Now that I have them all zeroed, I can do the 105 inch pounds thing. Give these a little twist, make sure they pop in all the way and they don't pop out. Oh, I forgot the dipstick. Yeah, she's got oil. Amazing. I got a motor mount thing. Yeah, it kind of fits. Wonder if I can cheat and get this up without using my jack. And I got the little gob stopper thingamajigger. Little birdie says these mountain nuts only go to 40 foot pounds. And this stop nut goes to 16 foot pounds. My little baby ground is just the same as the rest of these six by one millimeters. I'm gonna start this thing up, see what happens. No shaky shaky, it's a beautiful thing. I got one of these fancy things. I'm going to put the right coolant in it. Some people say you need Honda approved coolant, but this is it. It's um, it's global coolant. It's for all makes and models. And there goes one gallon. This overflow too, it's all full of that green coolant. So I'm going to take this out. Just take the top off and these just pull straight out. I filled this up to the max line. Yeah. Now I'm just going to run the car and I'm going to let all this coolant cycle and make sure that this upper radiator hose gets hot. As soon as this thing gets up to operating temperature and burps all the air out of it, I'm going to check the level again and make sure it's filled and call it a job. Okay, bye.